So that was again my fellow astronomy friends Chris here for the next video in this series and yeah if you're watching this video you're watching Chrisley's Observable Universe <laughs> and um, yeah we're, we're in our second video here. In the first video we talked about Deep Sky Stacker and the pre-processing um, within this tool and for the next one we'll be going over to Pixinsight for all the pre-processing that I'm doing. And you see still the latest or the, the last uh, result from Deep Sky Stacker here. And we can minimize that. And now we are in Pixinsight. So, um, as I said in the previous video, the Pixinsight pre processing is a bit more time consuming and uh, a bit, yeah, more tricky. So, Deep Sky Stacker, I would recommend to people um, using it for the first time or first few times. It's still still a great tool for even if you are totally experienced. Don't, I don't want to say that, but um, it's just more easy, I think, to get into than uh, Pixinsight. But of course, you're here for watching Pixinsight tutorial, so um, let's just go ahead and do that. So I'm in Pixinsight and I got my default workspace opened. And the main thing is here, we want to do exactly the same things that Deep Sky Stacker did for us uh, in an automated way but we want to do it semi, um, yeah, uh, manual. So semi manual. And for that, um, we need to do a few things. You remember the score um, that Pixinsight assigned to our files? Well, we also have to, or can do it ourselves. And that's a great thing here because yes, we can uh, edit also the weighting algorithm and stuff. So let's jump right into this. So we're going to be using the subframe selector tool here and um, you can find it um, in, I think, pre-processing, stuff like that here, and subframe selector, yeah. Or you can search here in the process explorer that works as well. So we are, come on, close. Yeah, we are greeted by three different um, frames here, three different programs. Um, and like this one is the main one, I would say. This is your main GUI program. On this hand side, you have um, the results then from the evaluation and here you can edit the, some expressions, but we'll get into that in, in uh, the video here once we continue. So as I said, this is the main program. So we start off with this one and we can minimize that one and minimize that one as well. Leave it here. And so we have like three main functions on top of here. We can measure our subframes, we can output them to a separate destination, separate folder, and we can have a preview of our star detection algorithm because you can also set that um, th those settings. But we want to stay with the first one, measuring subframes. Then um, it's quite easy. We just add files here and we want to go with our light frames. So ignore all that stuff. We're going with the exact same files we used um, previously. So it was the Sol Nebula, day one, light frames and all of them. I need to make sure that there is no, okay, no separate wrong one here. All of them fits files, same as uh, for Deep Sky Stacker. So I'm using uh, that here and I just enter them. So that's that's quite easy. Now, um, you don't need to add any more stuff here on top. It's, you just add the light frames and then we have like a bunch of interesting uh, system parameters and you need to be aware of um, your values here for that, depending on your telescope and your uh, configuration. So the subframe scale is actually your resolution in terms of um, arc seconds per pixel. So, um, as I said, the focal length, the pixel size um, will determine how um, big of a portion of the sky you can see per pixel. And you have to calculate that. There is a handy tool which that just let me search it up real quick. I think it's CCD calculator here. You can see CCD calculator, it's uh, astronomy tools calculators, you can just search for CCD calculator. And then you can uh, enter your pixel size from your camera. For example, mine is 2.4 micrometer and your focal length. Let's go with the, um, well, with the reducer, I have 420, haha. Uh, <laughs> so um, you need to enter here also your um, 
lenses or uh, your stuff in between like coma correctors, reducers, Barlow lenses, stuff like that, but just the, the effective focal length. And then you um, obtain your um, resolution here in arc seconds per pixel. Um, just uh, 420 is the wrong one. I think it's 350. Uh, I'm not, yeah, some, that sounds about right. I think 355 or something. Oh. Let's just go with 350 and I have then, uh, so it's my William Optics with a reducer just for clarification. And then I obtain this um, scale here, the resolution, and we need to edit that here as well. So we know our arc seconds per pixel and it's 1.4. Let's go with that. Then the gain we used for our light frames. And typically this is a number from zero to 100. So it's an electrons per data number. But to be honest, I'm not too sure yet on... Um... Hey guys, Kat and Chris here, a quick interception. Uh, because at the time of filming this original tutorial, I was not too sure on the exact setting, but now I did some research and uh, actually it's a camera um, value you have to enter there and um, you can, um, of course, you can set the gain um, for each. I guess each Astrocam has its own gain setting and gain range, but typically um, from the manufacturer there should be a graph on uh, the distribution on the gain setting that you set in your software and the corresponding electron number per ADU, so per analog to dig digital unit we've learned in a previous video. And um, this is a graph you can, there uh, for my camera, maybe I probably will be showing you the uh, uh, image right now. And you have some points um, about uh, some typical gain points you want to set and then you have like a graph and then you can look in the graph what um, the electron per ADU number would correspond to. If you want to be super precise you could also do the sharp cap sensor analysis and um, then you can see the values for your exact um, camera type and your ex exact not only the model but also your manufactured <laughs> piece so maybe there are some um, differences between the chips so you know it for your very own chip and I think it should also work for DSLR cameras because I think that's also possible with the sharp cap analysis you, you just have to look that up um, okay so interception over let's continue with the rest of the video then um, the resolution so um whatever ADC your camera is using. I'm using a 12-bit ADC, so I can obtain values from zero to 4,095. The local midnight site and scale unit and stuff, it's not that important. So the three, one on the top are um, de um, determining your pixel um, scale and field of view to, to for the program to <laughs> get the right um, idea of what, what it's seeing. Uh, the other stuff, if you if you want to play around, you can also set star detection parameters, but I just leave it as default. The, down here we can um, take care of it later. Just make sure you have measure subframes here. And then let's click this round button here at the bottom, apply global, and it will do the calculation. And what it does, it will go through all the light subframes and all the light frames and it will you go through uh, different kind of parameters and we'll have a look at those just when this program is finished. Let's cut here again and we'll see you uh, after this uh, program has <laughs> finished the, the registration process. So, see ya. Okay, and we're back and we can see already it's giving us some output. So, um, our main frame, our main um, GUI uh, program we can leave here in the back and this now we can use um, the second uh, window here the measurements uh, window and we can see at the top our table with all our files with our, our light frames you can see I have 33 at this moment and then it gives us a uh, column with 
approved or not approved. We can lock something, we can see our file name, see the weight and a bunch of other stuff. Uh, all the values that have been um, evaluated here. And the most interesting ones will be um, A, the approval. So we can go through the files, sort them around, give them a weight and then approve or disprove them um, depending on a bunch of factors. And well, we can just do that now. And <laughs> the um, bottom graph here is actually quite useful because it visually shows you a bunch of information and it's actually quite helpful, I would say. So um, some things I've also learned from Kuif is that um, very helpful indicators would be the stars, the FWHM and the, what is it, the eccentricity um, here. But mainly I'm using only the stars and the FWHM and Maybe you could reduce that even just to one for that matter, but let's just have a look at the star count. So the program went through all the files and on the x-axis we see the index. So the last one would be the 33rd file <laughs> and we see here the first one. And we can see uh, the average here is around 3400, a bit below 3500. And we have a bunch of outliers here below. This one is going a bit low and then towards the end we're, well, <laughs> going down. And um, we can have a look at the files that are um, interesting for that matter. So this is 26, for example. I can just slew or scroll to this file, double click it and it will open it up. And then we can do the stretch here and we can see, okay, Actually, it's not looking too bad. I don't know why it doesn't have the um, biggest amount of stars, but compared, let's open the 28 as well. So scroll to 28 and then we can, can compare it. Also do the auto stretch. Okay, if you have a look at it, compare it. So there's no major difference, but I think you can see there are some stars missing, but it's it's a sub, subtle sub, subtle difference. Wait, I don't know my English is off today. Sorry, guys. <laughs> uh, uh, okay, but uh, just uh, leave that here and uh, no, just close it. And now we can see. Okay, um, this one is a bit weird. Um, those to the end are also a bit weird. I guess we can have a look at. Oops, no, I don't cross it out already come on yeah so it's number 32 you can see it in the index um, this one it's already marked and this should be like obviously uh, worse and I think you can if you remember the the first one um, there it's a bit blurry as well I think and you see um, the stars are uh, yeah maybe the tracking went um, nuts here or something else happened <laughs> but uh, it's like the, the interesting thing is like our eccentricity graph would also tell us probably that those frames or this frame is not that optimal, but we can also obtain this information from the star graph. So it's kind of, it's redundant uh, for that matter or, well, it, it's, it's not like um, the eccentricity graph will tell us a complete new story. That, that's what I'm uh, trying to tell you here. But of course we can have a look at it. So we can remember um, the number 32 was a bit weird in the eccentricity. We can have a look at it. Yes, it's also here. Uh, uh, quite an outlier for that matter. And roundabout we are here uh, at 0.64 kind of thing. But as I said, mainly I'm using the stars and the FWHM, which is an indicator for your, um, foc uh, for your focus. So full width, half maximum, which means um, it is just like a like a evaluation uh, parameter. So, uh, and for that, it's the lower the better. So if you have a lower FWHM, it means your stars are smaller or well, you have like a sharper focus uh, for that sense. And we can see um, in the beginning, um, we're even below four, which is really great for my setup here. 
So that, that was some good focus here. And towards the end, we have this outlier here. Um, it's getting better. Maybe there was a weak focus or something. And then towards the end, it's getting worse again. So typically I would use those two um, for my, um, uh, well, evaluation. And what we are going to do is now to use our third um, window here. And this one um, actually helps us to give some commands here and to, to write some code actually if you want, but it's just like a, like a, a Boolean uh, expression you can write here. So um, you can use all the values that are um, displayed here. And if you hover over this window, it will also give you a quick explanation what you can do here. So it's actually yeah, JavaScript um, being processed. But we can just say, approve everything. And then we have a Boolean expression, just like um, everything, fwhm below, oops, wrong button, uh, below, what do we say? We can go with like the, the, the um, uh, median, the, the Gauss, Gaussian median. What's the English term for that? Yeah, normal verteilung, normal distribution. <laughs> yeah, that's the one. Um, we can go with this value, so around about 3.6. But actually, I, I know that like four is even like around four would be a good um, value for me. So maybe I'm going with uh, like everything below four is being approved. And then we can hit the play button and you will see it will automatically tick off all the subframes which have not, um, which do not conform to this uh, expression here. So that's how we do it. And of course, as, as it is a Boolean expression, we can end this <laughs> expression with another expression. And as I said, the stars would also be a good indicator. So we go with F and WHM below four and um, stars above. Uh, stars above, well, let's say 3000. You see the F, it's even grayed out because of that. We only have like this one, which would be a bit weird. It's not, it, it has not been um, sorted out because of the FWHM um, expression. So we need to make sure that this one is out of the mix as well. So we say, let's go with stars higher than, let's go with 3000 or maybe 2,800. Let's see, I don't know if it will make that much of a difference. Yeah, this one is crossed out. I think this one has not been crossed out because um, I previously clicked on it. So you saw the circle. So you can lock it, you see here, it has been locked. Then uh, the other commands will not change it. Um, maybe you definitely know um, that this subframe was good and you wanna obtain it even though it has a bad rating or something like that. But I don't have that here, so <laughs> we, we can continue with that. And now um, we have uh, uh, some expression. Um, you can make it uh, as complicated as you wish. You can incorporate some even more stuff. You can take the eccentricity. You can take the average of something or, or stuff. And you can also use some mathematical expressions uh, from JavaScript. So that's also supported but I'm using a rather simple expression here most of the time, and it helps me to um, get uh, only the best subframes uh, that are well suited for my final image. The also other thing is, uh, in, in comparison to DSS, we see like a lot of interesting um, data actually about our subframes. So we can see um, like some bar graphs uh, or like a histogram kind of. Um, Let's not go with the eccentricity, but maybe with, uh, no, that's also the, uh, let's go with the stars. That's easier to explain. So you can see um, here, it gives you a probability um, and you can say if you want to be, um, you want to obtain 48.5% of data um, for, for being used in your mainframe or for your main uh, master light frame you can go with this um, barrier or this threshold. If you throw out everything below 3,400 something, then you would um, throw out 51% uh, for that matter. And let's say um, you want to keep uh, maybe 80% and you can scroll here, something like that. Oh, where is it? Here's runabout. So you, you would need to 
uh, assign your threshold value to around 3000 um, stars for that matter. Just some quick <laughs> add on explanation. Um, okay. Then um, we've selected uh, a, an approval message here, but uh, we want to have a waiting exp expression as well. It will give you um, the uh, SNR weight, for example, and it also, no, this is still empty because it's the assigned weight, but so the PSF signal weight, it's something that the program calculates itself. We see uh, it also correlates with the um, values we've previously selected out from that. so. It's like an automated value, probably something similar that Deep Sky Stacker will be using, but we want to make our own. And for that, you can, as I said, you can go as complicated as you want and wait, 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 where is it? Wait, I'll be opening something real quick because I got an expression and I <laughs> recommend that you, if you found an expression, you can save it. So I have mine here as a TXT file. <laughs> Um, just copy it. Uh, if I remember it, and please remind me if I did not put it there, um, I will be putting this expression also uh, in the uh, information box below the video. So you see in this expression the FWHM is being used, um, the eccentricity and as well as noise. So um, it's not something I found from the internet actually, it's something from a um, good book about um, pixel side editing and some processes. So um, I'm using that <laughs> from from a well quality source, I would say. So, um, so far, uh, I think it's it's a valid expression because if we apply this, then you see um, the weight has changed here. And now we can also see the weight here in the gray um, display. And it kind of correlates with um, at least the outliers here and the later ones as well. And we can check that if we um, not don't sort it by index here on top, but we sort by weight and ascending, that's fine. Then we can see, of course, our lowest weights would be at the top and our highest weights, which will be um, used by the stacking algorithm um, uh, with, with a weighting factor. So um, higher weight means your um, light frame, your, your good light frames will be used uh, in a greater um, manner for your stacking later and the not so goodish or yeah, mid kind of um, quality frames will not be, um, will not have such a big weight in the end for your first stacked picture. So um, that's why we're assigning a weight here and you can see it's good, <laughs> the lowest weights are the ones which are actually grayed out and we have one that has been approved with a low weight. We could check that theoretically if it's if it's good frame or maybe we can throw it out then. And typically here um, we would obtain our best frame, uh, the lowest one in the table here. And we can just, I would recommend to double click once and A to have a look at it uh, for once. So just look at it and see if it's fine. And I would say it is fine and just leave it open because later we will need that for the alignment. So um, don't throw it away, just leave it open in the workspace, um, the best frame. And yeah, then if we were fine with our expressions, we can go to our first window once again, this one. And um, we don't change anything here, but then we can select a directory. So. I will go, well, I already tried to do some stuff here, but we just make a separate folder with um, just say, just call it YouTube. And then uh, we'll make a folder with selected frames, for example, and choose that one. And then um, you can also select, uh, or the keyword, the default keyword would be SS weight leave that or change it to, I don't know, way now um, you don't want to use another <laughs> fits um, parameter. So maybe just leave it at SS weight, subframe selector weight. I guess that's the um, uh, wording here. And then we can just hit the apply global button. Oh, and I did the wrong one. <laughs> we need to go <laughs> to output subframes because then it will uh, take all the good subframes, 
assign the weight to it and put it into the directory. So we're doing that. <clears throat> And it's taking a bit of time again, but it's finished now. And well, okay, we can leave that here. And now in our folder, we should have it, but we can ch check it once again with our another second tool for the pre pre processing, which is the blink tool. Um, in the beginning, I didn't know what this was actually being used for, but it's just like a um, a down key, or like a little thumb cinema. <laughs> that would be the direct translation from the German term, but uh, you know, um, those kind of booklets where you have a bunch of pages and you flip through them. That's kind of the purpose of Blink. You can um, open a lot of subframes here and just quickly go through them and um, like a little film actually, a movie. Um, so we go to, where did we put it? Now, the more data you have, <laughs> the more you will know. <laughs> it's always good to be organized with those kind of thing. I put it in somewhere YouTube, right? Uh, where, where? Oh no, it's in my local. That's why I couldn't find it. Um, YouTube, here we have it, selector frames. Okay, then we select all of them. The good thing is there are not that many actually. Open them, then it's loading them in. And it will give us this output frame. Then we can select here a time uh, for which uh, the display time, um, how long each frame should be displayed. You can leave it at 0 0.05 seconds because then you can go through it rather quick. Um, we have a bunch of tools here at the bottom. You can root through them if you want, but mainly the purpose is we click here, display animation, and then we can also zoom in here. And we can pay attention to um, some details. So theoretically, if we would have, um, some some critical point in the image, for example, a a um, different or like a I don't know if you have like one very um, important thing uh, of a nebula, like like an arch or stuff like that. Then you could um, zoom to that and see if there's some weird stuff going on. So you can see at one point I think there's an aircraft flying on the top left side. Yeah, you can see that. Um, that, that actually is not like if it's just a single frame, it's not a reason to throw it out because the stacking algorithm will notice it if it's just in um, one subframe. But if you have like, I don't know, like the five last pictures have like a very bright rectangle at the bottom because you went close to your neighbor or stuff like that, uh, <laughs> um, then you can um, hit stop or you know, you remember on the right side what kind of frame that uh, was. You can uh, manually click with the buttons here. And then if you found it, just remember it. You can, A, you can copy over all your frames you want to keep. So you can, um, I think it's here this cut option or the um, copy, where is it? Copy selected files here, that one. So you could say, okay, let's, let's imagine the five, five lowest pictures were bad and we want to keep everything. Oh, I did not select it. Sorry, wrong button. This one and scroll up. Oh no, it's scrolling with me. Okay, that's a bit tricky. Maybe we can deselect it it's like this. Uh, yes. Okay, we do the other way around. So we deselect it. And now every marked frame um, you can copy over here. Copy selected files, new collect selection. And by that way you would have scrapped the five lowest pictures or you would remember the names. So those are 20, 21, 27, 28 and just go to your original fo uh, folder in the file explorer uh, and um, just throw them out manually. So that's actually just the blink tool is just a second um, instance to make sure that you don't have any weird artifacts in your um, pictures. And as I said, <laughs> compared to Deep Sky Stacker, you have a lot of more um, in intel about all uh, the details that there are going on with your subframes and some, some details. Maybe you can even learn something from there to um, apply to your image imaging sequence once you're taking the images. So yeah, 
it's always great to learn, I think. Uh, at least I learned a bunch of things here. So uh, once we're finished with that, we can close our blink um, screen and we can also close this here. And just make sure to keep your best frame with the best weight um, rating. Okay, now um, I think this video, let's see how much time did we take already? Oh, we are around about half an hour. I think I can split this up in another <laughs> video because it's getting too long. So now we've arrived uh, theoretically with our sub um, selected frames and we need to do a bunch of more things. And in order to do so, we'll have a look at that in a separate video, the uh, real pre-processing in pixel side. So stay tuned for this video. And uh, thank you so much for watching. My name is Chris and um, yeah, catch you in the next video. If you enjoyed, be sure to smash the like button in this video. So thanks for watching, Chris out. See you in the next one. Bye.